Well, <clears throat> Maria, I'm glad to have heard from you um, in the summary of that question about what's going on in the world because on Tuesday night I watched story time with Barack Obama and I gotta tell you, um, it sounded like everything in the world was going amazing, you know? Dr. Carson, the president says he does not want to treat ISIS as a foreign army. But ISIS is neither a country nor a government. How do you attack a network that does not respect national borders? Well, I'm very happy to get a question this early on. I was going to ask you to wake me up when the time came. <laughs> um. Saying Republicans should resist, quote, the siren call of the angriest voices. She confirmed she was referring to you, among others. And I, wherever you are sitting, Nikki, I am a friend. We're friends. That's good. But she did say, she did say there was anger. And I could say, oh, I'm not angry. I'm very angry because our country is being run horribly. And I will gladly accept the mantle of anger. Our country is being run by incompetent people. And yes, I am angry. And so everybody needs to discount some of the things you're going to hear in these ads and discount the, the back and forth here because every person here is better than Hillary Clinton. Uh, Neil, I was mentioned to. You were? <laughs> yeah, I said everybody. Oh. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and, and I just want to take this opportunity to say, you know, in the 2012 election, you know, we, and when I say we, Republicans tore themselves apart. You know, we have to stop this because, you know, if we manage to damage ourselves and we lose the next election and a progressive gets in there and they get two or three Supreme Court picks, this nation is over as we know it. And we got to look at the big picture here. And switch gears. Senator Cruz, you suggested Mr. Trump, quote, embodies New York values. Could you explain what you mean by that? You know, I think most people know exactly what New York values are. I am from New York. I well, 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 you're from New York, so yeah. you might not. But I promise you, in the state of South Carolina, they do. So, conservatives actually do come out of Manhattan, including William F. Buckley and others, just so you understand. And just so, if I could, because he insulted a lot of people, I've had more calls on that statement that Ted made. And everybody in the world watched, and everybody in the world loved New York and loved New Yorkers. And I have to tell you, that was a very insulting statement that Ted made. Mr. Trump, your comments about banning Muslims from entering the country created a firestorm. Is there anything you've heard that makes you want to rethink this position? No. No. But we have a serious problem, and we can't be the stupid country anymore. We're laughed at all over the world. Donald, Donald, can, can I, I, I hope you reconsider this because this policy is a policy that makes it impossible to build the coalition necessary to take out ISIS, Syria. So I hope you'll reconsider. I hope you'll reconsider. What kind of signal does that send to the rest of the world that the United States is a serious player in creating peace well, and you security? Said, you said that he made those comments and they represented him being unhinged, yet after he made them... Yeah, they are unhinged. Well, well after he made them... They His are poll numbers went up eight points in South Carolina. Now, 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 wait. Eleven points are to you, be exact. Are you saying, are you saying that all those people who agree with Mr. Trump are unhinged? No, not at all. Absolutely not. Last week, the New York Times editorial board quoted you as saying that you would impose up to a 45 percent tariff on Chinese goods. And that's wrong. They were wrong. It's the New York Times. They're always wrong. Well, <laughs> they were wrong. You never said it because no, they provided what I said at an editorial board. I would use, they were asking me what to do about North Korea. And uh, we do need China. Donald's right about North Korea. I mean, the fact is, is that they need to put the pressure on. And frankly, we need to intercept ships coming out of North Korea so they don't proliferate all this dangerous material. But what he's touching, talking about, I think, has got merit. And I'm not putting that tariff or whatever he's saying here, but here's what I am saying. I'm liking him for tonight. For too long. 
<laughs> no, for too long, what happens is, and we need to bring our debt under control, make our economy stronger. That is the way to deal with China at the end of the day. Neil, the We're problem gonna... with what Marco is saying is that it takes too long. They're sucking us dry, and it takes too long. It would just, you absolutely have to get involved with China. They are taking so much of what we have in terms of jobs, in terms of money. We just can't do it any He is right. If you put a tariff on the good, it's Americans who pay it. Absolutely. You're looking and, at me? And, yeah. Prices go higher for, hey, for... Can I tell you what? It'll never happen. And we're letting them get away with it. And we can't let them get away with it. And that's why we have to use Carl and we have to use our great business people and not political hacks to negotiate with these here, guys. It, 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 or how about Boeing right here within a mile? Do you think that the Chinese, if they had a 45 percent tariff imposed on all their imports, wouldn't retaliate and start buying Airbus? Of course they would. This would be devastating for our economy. We need someone with a steady hand being president of the United States. Real quick, Senator. Yeah. Go ahead, Senator Cruz, and then we have to get to tax reform. And we don't need a weak person being president of the United States, okay? Because <laughs> that's what we'd get if it were just. I'll tell you what. We don't need on, that. Man. We don't need that. That's, that's essentially what we have now, and we don't need that. Briefly. And that's why we're in the trouble that we're now. And by the way, Jeff, you mentioned Boeing. Take a look. They order planes. They make Boeing build their plant in China. They don't want them made here. They want those planes made in China. They're a mile that's away not the way the game is supposed Bush. to be played. Thank you, Mr. Trump. You, you flew in with your 767, didn't you, right there, right next to the plant? No, the new planes. I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about yeah. in the future. They're building massive plants in China because China does not want Boeing building their planes here. They want it built in China because China happens to be smart the way they do it, not the way we well, do it. You head back to the airport tonight. Now, go check and see. Oh, yeah, what I'll, the I'll play. check for you. Check it out. Should I'd like don't to pay Maria, I'd like to interrupt. Instead of 10 percent. Maria, I'd like, to, I'd like to interrupt. I'd like to interrupt this Obama. debate on the floor of the Senate um, to actually answer the question you asked, which was on entitlements. Do you remember that, everybody? This was a question on entitlements. Oh, I'll answer and the, the, and the reason. And the reason. Now you already had your chance, Mark. You blew it. Um, here's the thing. <laughs> I mean, well, the fact, the is, the fact is, the reason why. If you'll answer the, the common fact core is, question. The fact Are you planning on putting your assets in a blind trust should you become president? With such vast wealth, how difficult will it be for you to disentangle yourself from your business and your money and prioritize America's interests first? I couldn't care less about my company. It's peanuts I want to make. I want to use that same up here, whatever it may be to make America rich again and to make America great again. I have Ivanka and Eric and Don sitting there. Run the company, kids. Have a good time. I'm going to do it for America. Okay? <laughs> so I would, I would be willing to do it. So, so Kasich, as someone who has to deal with controversial police shootings, All right. Uh, <laughs> You've had to deal with controversial. Why you wore a red tie? Exactly. Go ahead. Uh, you've had to deal with controversial shootings in your own state. So your thinking has changed. The issue is a dramatically different issue than it was 24 months ago. 24 months ago, 36 months ago, you did not have a group of radical crazies named ISIS. Radical Islamic terrorism was not invented 24 months ago. 24 months ago, we had Al Qaeda, we had Boko Haram, we had Hamas, we had Hezbollah. That that Rubio Schumer amnesty bill, one of the things it did is it expanded Barack Obama's power to let in Syrian refugees. The Senate just a few weeks ago voted to suspend refugees from Middle Eastern countries. I voted yes to suspend that. Marco voted on the other side. So you don't get to say we need to secure the borders and at the same time try to give Barack Obama more authority. Maria, let me clear something up here. This is an interesting point when you talk about immigration. Ted Cruz, you used to say you supported doubling the number of green cards. Now you say that you're against it. You used to support a 500 percent increase in the number of guest workers. Now you say that you're against it. You used to support, you used to support legalizing people that were here illegally. Now you say you're against it. You used to say that you were in favor of birthright citizenship. Now you say that you are against it. And by the way, it's not just on immigration. You used to support TPA. Now you say you're against it. I saw you on the Senate floor flip your vote on crop insurance because they told you it would help you in Iowa. And last week we all saw you flip your vote on ethanol in Iowa for the same reason. Not call Edward Snowden, as you did, a great public servant. Edward Snowden is a traitor. And if I am president and we get our hands on him, he is standing trial for treason. And one more point, one more point, one more point. 
Every single time that there has been a defense bill in the Senate, three people team up to vote against it. Bernie Sanders, Rand Paul, and Ted Cruz. In fact, the only budget you have ever voted for, Ted, in your entire time in the Senate is a budget from Rand Paul that brags about how it cuts defense. Uh, 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 I'm going to get a response to that, Neil. There, there's no way he launches Terry 11 Clark, attacks. Terry Quick. I'm gonna, he had no fewer than 11 attacks there. I appreciate your dumping your oppo research folder on, on the debate no, it's your stage. record. But, but I will say you think at, least, like each at other? least half of the things Marco said are flat out false. They're absolutely false. So let's start, let's start with immigration. Let's start with immigration and have a little bit of clarity. Marco stood with Chuck Schumer and Barack Obama on amnesty. I stood with Jeff Sessions and Steve King. Marco stood today, standing on this stage, Marco supports legalization and citizenship for 12 million illegals. I opposed and oppose legalization and citizenship. And by the way, the attack he keeps throwing out on the military budget, Marco knows full well I voted for his amendment to increase military spending to $697 billion. What he said, and he said it in the last debate, it's simply not true. And as right, president, Governor, I will look, rebuild Governor. the military and keep this country. All right, we have to stop. The CEO of Apple, Governor Tim Cook, says, unless served with a warrant, private communication is private, period. Do you agree or would you try to convince him otherwise? I would try to convince him otherwise, but this last back and forth between two senator, backbench senators, you know, it explains why we have the mess in Washington, D.C. Going back and forth and talking Could about you stuff. you answer this question? Oh, I'll talk about that, too. But you haven't asked me a question in a while, Neil, so I thought I'd get that off my chest, if you don't mind. Fair enough. <laughs> so, so. Mr. Donald Trump. And as you know, the U.S. Constitution says only natural-born citizens are eligible for the office of President of the United States. Stop me if you've heard this before. Now you were born, you were born in Canada, but that fellow next to you, Donald Trump and others, has said that being born in Canada means you are not natural born, and that has raised questions about your eligibility. Do you want to try to close this topic once and for all tonight? <laughs> well, Neil, I'm glad we are focusing on the important topics of the evening. <laughs> You know, back in September, uh, my friend Donald said that he had had his lawyers look at this from every which way. And there was no issue there. There was nothing to this birther issue. Now, <laughs> since September, the Constitution hasn't changed. <laughs> but the poll numbers have. And, and I recognize, I, I recognize that Donald is dismayed that his poll numbers are falling in Iowa. At the end of the day, the legal issue is quite straightforward, but I would note that the birther theories that Donald has been relying on, some of the more extreme ones insist that you must not only be born on U.S. soil, but have two parents born on U.S. soil under that theory. Not only would I be disqualified, Marco Rubio would be disqualified, Bobby Jindal would be disqualified, and interestingly enough, Donald J. Trump would be disqualified. Not me. Because, because Donald's mother was born in Scotland. She was naturalized. Now, Donald, but on, I the was issue, born here. on the issue Remember. of citizenship, Donald, Big difference. on the issue of citizenship, Donald, I'm not going to use your mother's birth against you. Okay, good. <laughs> because it wouldn't work. You're an American as is everybody else on this stage. And I would suggest we focus on who's best prepared to be commander in chief, because that's the most important question facing the country. Did he address that? Did you I'll, raise I'll this you. because First of, of all, his rising holdup? Well, let me just tell you something, and you know because you just saw the numbers yourself. NBC Wall Street Journal just came out with a poll. Headline, Trump way up, Cruz going down. I mean, so don't, so you can't, you can't, I, they don't like the Wall Street Journal, they don't like NBC, but I like the poll. And frankly, <laughs> it just came out. And in Iowa now, as you know, Ted, in the last three polls, I'm beating you. So, you know, you shouldn't misrepresent how well you're doing with the polls. 
You don't have to say that. In fact, I was all for you until you started doing that, because that's a misrepresentation, number one. Number two, this isn't me saying it. I don't care. I think I'm going to win fair and square. I don't have to win this way. We're running. We're running. He does great. I win. I choose him as my vice presidential candidate, and the Democrats sue because we can't take him along for the ride. I don't like that, okay? <laughs> the fact is, and if for some reason he beats the rest of the field, he beats the rest of the field, if for some, see, they don't like that. They don't like that. But, no, they don't like that he beats the rest of the field because they want me. But, <laughs> but if for some reason, Neil, he beats the rest of the field. I already know the Democrats are going to be bringing a suit. And if you become the nominee, who the hell knows if you can even serve in office? So you should go out, get a declaratory judgment, let the courts decide, and you why shouldn't you, have mentioned the polls because I would have been much but different. Why now? Why are you raising this issue now? Because now he's doing a little bit better. No, I didn't care before. It's true. No, it's true. Hey, look, he never a chance. Now he's doing better. He's got probably a four or five percent chance. Thank you, Mr. Trump. If there was a, and, the, and you know, I'm not bringing a suit, I promise, but the Democrats are going to bring a lawsuit and you can't, you have to have certainty. You can't have a question. I can agree with you or not, but you can't have a question over your head. Senator, you want to respond? Well, listen, I've spent my entire life defending the Constitution before the U.S. Supreme Court, and I'll tell you, I'm not going to be taking legal advice from Donald Trump. You don't Trump. have to. Take it from Lawrence Trump. You don't have to. What I'll tell you also. Take it from your professor. What I will Take tell it from you your also, own professor. I can, I can tell the you chances one thing. of any litigation proceeding and succeeding on this are zero. It's wrong. Now, Mr. Trump it's wrong. is. And there's a reason why Hillary's supporters are echoing Donald's attacks on me. He because is not Hillary the only one. Wants he to is face not Donald the only Trump one. in the there general election. There are many election. lawyers. And I'll tell you what, Donald, you, you very kindly just a moment ago offered me the VP slot. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If this all works out, I'm happy to consider uh, naming you as VP. And so if you happen to be right, you could get the top job at no, the end of the day. No, I, I think if it doesn't... No, no, I like that. I like it. I'd consider it. But I think I'll go back to building buildings if it doesn't work out. Actually, I'd but love I have to get a feeling, you to build I have a, a feeling it's going to work out, actually. Right. Thank you. I was a Neil, I was Neil, I Neil, question. I want to, Neil, I can tell you this. Let me, let me Neil, just say because I, I was invoked in that question. So let me just say in that answer. Let me say, the real question here, I, I hate to interrupt this episode of Court TV, but the real... <laughs> And the only reason we got them back is because we owed them, with a stupid deal, $150 billion. If I'm president, there won't be stupid deals anymore. We will make America great again. We will win on everything we do. Thank you.